Hey, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. A quick little invitation to all of you IB Economic students to head on over to my website, bradcartwright.com, a website designed to help you improve your scores in IB Economics, whether that be on an in-class quiz, a test, or ultimately the IB exam. So if you want some more information, check out the description box below. And other than that, enjoy this video. All right, well, here we go, All right? Let's take a look at this price ceiling diagram and like nearly all diagrams in microeconomics, they all start at the same place, which is the basic supply and demand diagram. If you don't know how to draw this diagram, if you don't know the 11 main components of the supply and demand diagram, check out that video right there, how to draw the basic demand and supply diagram. I give you a secret little way of memorizing all of the components. So if you don't know that, check that video out and then come back at this one because that's how we derive this basic diagram. All right, so what do we got? We got a diagram for the market for housing. We got the quantity of housing in thousands of units per year, right? Let's imagine this being for say apartments and the government wants to come in and put a price ceiling, which is a maximum price, on the price of housing. So like all economic situations, you begin with the beginning of the story. And the beginning of the story is this diagram. In microeconomics, it's the basic demand and supply diagram, which have the components of price, dollar sign, or any currency, P1, zero, Q1, quantity of housing, number of units, the year, demand one, S1, supply one, and a title. Okay. So what is a price ceiling? It is a maximum price. What the government is going to do is intervene in the market to prevent owners of houses from charging the P1 price level, right? Who are they looking out? At? Who are they looking for? Looking out for? In this case, the government is trying to take care of consumers of apartment house, of houses and make apartments or housing more affordable to more people, okay? So this is government intervention that's going to help out whom? It's going to help out the demanders of housing by lowering the price artificially. Okay, lowering the price, that's right. Because a ceiling is, you got to start at the origin, a ceiling is going to prevent the price from rising up to the existing equilibrium level, which is P1. So a ceiling, a price ceiling, is drawn below the market equilibrium price. Always, 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 always. And that's where we get our P2. And then we have two new equilibrium places or two new important spots, not two equilibrium places, two very important spots. We have created another quantity out here we're gonna call Q2 and another quantity over here, which we are going to call Q3. All right, now I'm gonna make this look a little bit better in a second, right? But um, for now, let's just take a look at what this means in the uh, marketplace for uh, housing. Okay, what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. Well, we were operating at a P1, Q1 level of output. Housing's, um, people had to pay P1, but a ceiling is going to keep it below P2. And what's that going to create? It's going to create increased demand right, for housing at a Q2 level, but how many houses would actually be provided at a Q2 level? And this is where we get into the relationship between the desire of demanders and the desire of suppliers. Okay, so at P2 level, what we are going to find, let me clean this up a little bit so we can have a little bit of a clearer view, is we are going to have the government trying to create a situation where housing is cheaper, but by dropping the price, setting a price at the P2 level that, that is a government-issued level that the price cannot go above, they're going to create actually a shortage of housing. And the shortage of housing is seen right here in the difference between Q3 and Q2. If the price for Q2, this is how many people would love to rent a house. 
But at P2 level, this is all of the people that can actually supply the housing. And right here, we are going to have a shortage or excess demand, which the government's then going to have to come in and actually subsidize the housing, which would be a shift of the supply curve outward. But that is a solution to this problem, not how to draw the problem or how to draw the diagram itself. And this is the how-to series. So we're going to stay right with that. Okay. So this is the price ceiling diagram right here, right? You, you make a straight across line like this. You create an equilibrium at Q2 that will not be realized. Why? Because at the P2 level, only Q3 housing would be um, provided. So you can see what would result, right? What's going to happen? Well, these suppliers that got cut out of the marketplace are going to respond. They're going to go to the government and say, hey, what about us? You just artificially lowered the price down to P2, and now you're going to have to solve that problem because otherwise we're upset and we're going to vote you out of office, right? And so what the government would then do is provide a subsidy to these people, right? And move this shift, the supply curve outward, and therefore create a new S2 curve here. Well, there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want more information on the subscriptions available for IB Economic students around the world, check out the description box below. All right, my friends, a reminder to be good to yourselves out there. Be kind to someone today, and we'll talk to you in a bit.